Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different and have some fun. I'm gonna assemble this little kit here, which is an ultrasonic levitation device. I got it on AliExpress, and I'm gonna go over some different soldering techniques that I use when I assemble these small electronics. So here is what comes in the kit. It's got the little styrofoam balls that can be levitated. And on mine, I only received one of these little transducers. So what I am going to do is disassemble one of these distance measuring kits and see if uh, hopefully those transducers are the same type and will be what I need for this project. So they do provide a schematic that shows how all of the parts need to be put together, but uh, translating that to the actual printed circuit board is really not too hard. You've got, got the reference designators and uh, the overall proximity to other components will be fairly easy to see. First I will start with the solder paste and hot air method. I apply solder paste with a syringe that it came in. Opening the plastic tape and reel parts is actually one of the hardest parts of this project. You don't get any extra parts, so don't lose any. The diodes, ICs, and electrolytic capacitor will matter which direction they are placed. Typically the cathode on the diodes has a thicker line in the silk screen. And for these LEDs, pin 1 is the cathode. Resistors and ceramic capacitors can be placed in either direction. When the hot air melts the solder, capillary action will pull the parts into place. The hot air does blow the parts around if you're not careful, so if you do it this way, try to have the hot air blow straight down. I'm also going to use the pace and hot air method for the first IC. Once again, the pace can be a little bit sloppy. For the processor, I will apply solder paste, but this time I will heat it with a solder iron. This helps avoid heating the entirety of the part, and it can be helpful for rework situations. The last method is to use a roll of solder, which is probably the most common way for most hobbyists to solder parts like this. I like to put some solder down on the one pad first, then solder that pin. This holds the part in place while the rest of the pins are soldered. The trick here is to use a iron to heat the pad, then dip the solder at the tip to melt it, and it should wick up the pin in order to form a good joint. It takes some practice to get a right, the right amount of solder. The single pin first method also works with two pin parts as well. This board doesn't have that many components, so I'm going to show all of them being soldered. This video has sped up four times on all of these parts to keep the video from being too long. I'm super bummed that my Windows PC made my video recording so jumpy, and I will definitely be looking into a different way to record in the future. The through hole parts are pretty self-explanatory. The only thing to watch out for is that the electrolytic capacitor polarity is correct. The mechanical assembly is pretty simple. The smallest standoffs are used at the bottom as feet. The mid-sized standoffs are used between the two bottom boards, and everything else is used between the two transducers. They say the polarity of the transducers is not important, and they can be installed in either direction. Once powered up with a 12 volt DC center positive supply, you can add the styrofoam balls. I tried adding them with my metal tweezers, but the static electricity caused the balls to stick to the tweezers. So barbecue skewers used as chopsticks work quite well for placing them in the standing acoustic waves. What is weird is that there is actually no audible noise and it works completely quiet. 
for those of you who are curious what is happening electrically, between the two standoffs is a square wave of 12 volts that turns on and off at a frequency of roughly 40 kilohertz. This project probably didn't need a programmed microcontroller to generate that, but doing it that way keeps the component count low. Alright, that's it. I enjoyed assembling this little levitator and I'm glad my extra ultrasonic transducer worked. This kit is difficult to assemble because the components are so small, but if you are up for a challenge, this is really an inexpensive thing to try. I will put a link in the description for the AliExpress store that I got mine at. Thank you so much for watching.